Good morning. Can you hear me? Car folks, can you hear me okay? Cindy set up oh, there. The light from men say yes. Uh, if you are in your car and it is staticky, we also think you are going to be able to hear just fine with the outside PA system as well. So if you could play around with us with it and let us know how things are going. And good morning to everybody sitting out on the lawn as well. And good morning to pe people who are joining us via Facebook. Uh, second week of being together and it is a good thing is it not it's it's really nice to be able to not just see cars this week but even see faces of people so I am very grateful for that our uh, theme this morning comes from actually churchwide of the ELCA I uh, just want you to know that as we begin uh, our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton several weeks ago had said she was going to make available a sermon for today. Today is Trinity Sunday. And um, so she said she was going to do that and has. And uh, she actually redid everything given the events of the last couple of weeks. And so along with her sermon, there are also some prayers and things. And so that's what you're going to see incorporated in our service today. It is about racial um, injustice, those kinds of things. Her sermon, we did pre-record, right, the band too. I'm just checking. Yep, Wednesday night. We do have a pre-recorded service. We've been doing that just in case uh, Facebook doesn't work, to be honest with you. And um, we did, I did include her sermon then in the pre-recorded uh, service that you will find. You'll find it on Facebook here in a little while, or you will find it on our YouTube channel that you can access through our website. So basically our website. And I do encourage you, it's about 10 minutes long, and I do encourage you to listen to her sermon today. Um, the newsletter is coming out. I think the email went out for that, and you should be getting that in your mail here. And so I just invite you to pay attention to that. We do have a couple of educational opportunities. I'll talk more about one of those in a little while. So there's things on there. You might be wondering kind of what's next, right? And that's always, I don't know, we'll have to take this week by week as we keep experimenting and trying to gather together. But you do know that um, churches are able to be open. And so we are really a couple of things. One, we have to have a big plan in place, still working on that, as well as wanting to always just make decisions that we believe are common sense as well as safe decisions, being as safe as possible for all of us. So updates on how we gather, when we gather, all those kinds of things, we try to get that out to you. And so just uh, keep in touch with emails, the newsletter, those kinds of things. And if you ever have questions, just give us a holler because we are in the office. Okay, I think that's what I had for announcements. I see some of you brought your papers with you. You found those. We tried to include that on the email, and um, you might have it or pull it up on your phone. And so if you've got it, you can follow along. But we begin this morning with a prayer for racial justice. I invite you to join me in prayer. Save us, O oh God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action, from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O oh God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear this emotional work which is not theirs to do. Grateful for the long arc that bends toward justice, we pray, grant us wisdom, give us courage for the facing of these days, by the power of the Spirit, all for the sake of the kingdom that we share in Christ Jesus. Amen. With Job of old we cry out, everywhere the innocent suffer. Our desires and efforts achieve us little. O oh God, are you good, yet do nothing to help us? Our answers have holes and we fall through. Hear us, O oh God. Hear us, O oh God. Revive us with hope. Revive us with hope. Give us your life. Give, Give us, us your, your life. life. Hear these words and receive their power. The majesty of God, the Father, ungirds all that is. 
the mercy of God the Son accepts our despair, and the God, the comfort of God the Spirit embraces us in communities of care. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And we will begin with a song. notice we didn't give you any words to sing along unfortunately right it's one of the uh, recommendations is we don't get to sing together yet but that doesn't stop us from humming along and uh, so uh, I hope that you're able to enjoy the music still our first scripture reading today and that's the, the scripture reading I'll be referring to as well during the sermon is Psalm 8 Psalm 8 Lord our Lord how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than heaven. When I look up at your skies, at what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? You've made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. You've let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet, all sheep and all cattle, the wild animals too, the birds in the sky, the fish of the ocean, everything that travels the pathways of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. And our gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. If you would like, I, you, as you are able or as you desire, I invite you to stand for the reading. chapter 28. Now that 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. I stuck a children's sermon in there, Megan, and then I realized this morning I was like, oh, I forgot to think about a children's sermon. So, can you hear, you can hear me. Will your mom let you come up here a little bit for me? Jacob, you want to come up here too a minute? I just have some questions I want to ask you. Is that okay? So today is Trinity Sunday, right? And one of the things about Trinity Sunday is remember, God is one in three and three in one, which is a really, it's just hard to understand it. But what I want to talk about are the different ways we can understand God. And so we have God the Father, right? And do you know what we think about when we think about God the Father? Or here's, I'll, I'll give you a hint, God the Creator. What does that mean to you? Where it starts, absolutely. It starts with the beginning. Jacob, do you know what God made for us? 
God made the earth, absolutely. And what else in the earth? How's it possible? Say that again. Cows that make milk, absolutely. You got anything else you want to say that God created? Trees, plants, animals. How about the people that are sitting out here right now? Did God make people? Yes, and our psalm said God made us just a little bit less than divine and put us in charge of making sure everything went okay. So that's one way we can understand God, God the Father or God the Creator. Then we have God the Son. Do Who are we talking about? God, Jesus Christ, absolutely. And we know what Jesus did for us, right? What did Jesus do? Died on the cross and rose again, saved us from our sins, promises we'll go to heaven when we die. And we also say when we look at what Jesus did and the things he said, Jesus would tell us over and over again, when you see me, you see the Father. So we learn more about God as creator by looking at Jesus too. And then the third part of God that we talk about and celebrate is God the what? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good job. Now, can we see a Holy Spirit? No. We were talking yesterday with Jacob. Do you remember we were talking about waves, radio waves, and cell phone? Yeah. The Spirit is kind of the same thing. We can't really see the Spirit or hear the Spirit, but we know the Spirit is there. And Jesus told us over and over again, he gave us God, the Holy Spirit, to help us know what God is doing and to work among us and to kind of help us do God's work in the kingdom as well. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that's what we're celebrating today, all right? Thank you both for helping me out here. I appreciate it. Yeah. I know, I know. All right. So as I said, Bishop Eaton has a sermon today for, for all of us, and I do invite you to look that up later, um, either on Facebook or on our website, and uh, hear her words. You might find them somewhat uncomfortable, um, but that's okay, right? Our faith doesn't necessarily mean we, we are always supposed to be comforted. I have a friend or had a friend, and he always enjoyed that saying that said um, that God afflicts the comfortable and comforts the afflicted, right? And there is time for both of those sorts of things. And so her sermon might afflict us a little bit, but it's still necessary to hear those words. We are in the first week of June, the sixth month of the first year of a new decade. And I don't think anybody would disagree if I would say we already know that 2020 is going to have historic significance, right? for many generations to come. I keep finding myself thinking back to January when I was like, I don't know what God's got in store for us, but I'm not worried about it, right? Because God is out there ahead of us. I am so grateful that God has been out there ahead of us during these last six months as we have had our world literally turned upside down. I am also grateful that I didn't know in January how radically the world was about to change. I remember, um, I think it was probably in late March, it was one of those early days as we were staying at home. And I remember waking up and not even, I, I think you can probably relate, it was like, I didn't even know how to greet the day. Do you know what I mean, right? It was like, what am I supposed to do today? How am I supposed to act with all of this? And I remember thinking to myself, oh, I wish I knew what it would be like a couple months, two or three months from now. I am so glad I didn't know. And actually that day a voice in my head said, you do not want to know. And I think that was so true. I am grateful I did not know in January or even in March what was ahead of us. And in the same way, I'm grateful that I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring either. But I am very, very grateful for today. And I'm grateful as I listen to that psalm as well. I'm grateful for the privilege of being a child of God and for being made in the image of God. I'm grateful that God has made all of us to be just slightly less than the divine. And I am deeply aware of the immense responsibility that comes with that gift that God has given us. God indeed has given human authority to rule over all of creation. 
But that authority comes with responsibility, not to exploit or destroy creation, but to care for it and tend for creation. I'm going to quote from a, uh, um, a commentary that I read this week, and the person wrote, you see, God's ideal for a ruler was not that of absolute or arbitrary dictatorial power. The role of the king in ancient Israel was to provide a place where people could live in peace and in safety, raise their animals and their crops, and be treated with justice and equity, and be cared for if they were unable to care for themselves. The role of one having authority was to offer kindness, provision for good, peace and well-being, and plenty for all. That Hebrew word that we translate as dominion or authority also means to be wise. And we know as well that wisdom can be power, but wise power, again, does not exploit it doesn't use up and throw things away. Rather, wise power is mindful and caring, just as God is mindful and caring. So in that sermon from Bishop Eaton, you are going to hear her talk about the recent violence that started less than, it's still less than two weeks ago. And she will tell us as well that we all need to work together to end the systemic racism that really has been a part of our country since its inception. We know that that work is long overdue, and we also know that that work is difficult, difficult, difficult beyond compare. But we also know God has made us for this work and that God is with us in this work. And we know without a doubt that this is also one of the paths upon which God is leading us. Today's psalm is just one of hundreds of places in scripture that reminds us of this truth this truth that all of us as God's children in God's image, we are all called to work for justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly alongside God. Now this work has already made us and it will make us likely even more uncomfortable. It is going to stir up deep, deep emotions in all of us, including emotions of guilt, grief, shame, anger, fear. And this work also threatens to divide us even more perhaps than we are already divided. But this work also has the power to change us and to transform us into truly being the people who God calls us to be, the ones who are indeed slightly less than divine, the ones who indeed care for all of creation and each other with kindness and peace and plenty for all. Now there are and there will be many different ways to enter into this work. And each one of us gets to decide what that work is going to look like for each of us because we are all different people with our own experiences in life, our own understandings of one another. And so there will be lots of different ways that we might decide to be a part of combating racism. I want you to know of just one option that we are going to have here at Messiah. And you'll see that when you read the newsletter. Um, Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota put out a curriculum called Who is My Neighbor that talks about racism and racial inequality. They did it about four years ago, but it's still, it's still relevant. It's a six-week curriculum with some videos, a little bit of reading, and opportunity for some discussion. And so I'm offering that up, and if people are interested, that is something that we will do here as well. The other thing I want to say about the work that is before us today is that I cannot help but think that this work has been made both more difficult and easier by the other crisis that continues to confront us, right? That other crisis that keeps us all more than six feet apart and wearing masks and in our cars. The death and destruction that is has been and is continuing to be wrought by COVID-19. Now it makes our work more difficult for all of the apparent reasons. It makes it difficult to gather together, dealing with disruptions, coping with losses and grief and pain and with the illness itself. But I also have been thinking that maybe in some ways the pandemic that is also a part of our world might also make the work when it comes to justice and racism a little bit easier. I say that 
because over these last few months, all of us have learned how to live with major disruption in our lives. All of us have learned how to adjust when everything, everything in our world has been turned upside down. We have learned here at Messiah that we can still be church, even if we can't do church in the ways that we've always done it before. And maybe most importantly, we have also learned how it is that we are to sit with one another in our mutual grief and loss. We have all experienced it together and we have been learning how to provide comfort and care to one another in the mutual loss. And finally, we have all learned to live with the unimaginable. We have all been learning how to live in a world that just a few months ago we would never in our wildest dreams have been able to imagine. God has made us only slightly less than divine. We can treat one another and all of creation with kindness and care and compassion. And together, we can confront the sin of racism. We can remove it from our own lives and from our communities and from our world because after all, this is God's world. And we can do all these things and we do them only, of course, through Christ our Lord who gives us strength and mercy and forgiveness and who walks with us and behind us and maybe especially always ahead of us to show us how to do it. Amen. Let us sing. This next song is called Jesus Messiah and it was written by uh, Chris Tomlin. I hope that you all recognize this. Sin, who knew no sin that we. Must 
about places where heaven and earth meet and our uh, Celtic brothers and sisters call those thin places. Um, gosh, today as we sit here in God's creation and listen to music, not recorded but live, with beautiful <laughs> sounds, it feels like a thin space to me and I hope it does to you as well as we just sit and rest in the glory of God. I invite you to uh, share with uh, one another as we proclaim our faith. Uh, using the words of the Apostles' Creed, we will, we will proclaim our faith in the triune God. If you, again, it's windy, if you stand, your chair might fall over, so it's up to you. But please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and with the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide all your baptized children as we share your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation, to speak truth to fear and evil, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek wisdom and to respond with care and compassion to all those in need. Instill wisdom in advocates who work with those who are marginalized in our society and prod us all to do the work of overcoming racism and to seek justice for all people of every race and heritage. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need. We pray especially for those who are ill with COVID-19, for families who grieve the loss of loved ones, and for members and friends of our faith community. Today, we pray especially for Mary, Susa, Edith, and Beth, for Carly and Alex, for Mark and Kathy, for Rosie, Patrice, Milo, Catherine, for Judy, Jess, and Jackie, for Greg, Gary, and Earl, for Dave and Craig, for Cheech and Helen, for Brandy and Jan, Ben, Darren, and others we now name. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
I am going to gather my uh, uh, the bread and the wine as we prepare to celebrate communion. So I invite you from a distance or as socially appropriate to share God's peace with one another and say good morning. <laughs> everybody have communion with them? Looks like, yeah. Kim, you got communion? I have an extra one right here. disciples and said take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood it is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me together we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. of Christ is given for you. And then as you open up your cup for the grape juice, the blood of Christ is shed for you. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and give you peace. Amen. I'm going to let you sit back down just to receive the blessing and so you can enjoy the last song as well. But we'll conclude today with a prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God. Please pray with me. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to kindle us in your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world of people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. We'll have our sending song, and then I'm also going to, for those of you in your cars, I'll remove the um, stand so that you can just go out the other exit.
time to be in the service too. <laughs>